Hello, uh, my name is Vladimir Zukovsky. I work for Red Hat. And one of the major things which Red Hat works on, it's not just open software, which is not sufficient these days. It's always about communities, where we try to build a group of people interested in our products, or rather, we want to turn interesting things which people do, basing their community, and we're sustaining this community so that later on we can sell this as a Red Hat product. But the core of this is always the community, a group of people who are interested. This is why we're having a panel discussion between various members of communities. They are usually fairly small by our standards, of course, but nevertheless, they're incredibly important because A, they're local, B, small communities become large communities in the blink of an eye, it's not really a problem. Um, so today, I think I would leave introductions to yourself because you know yours better than I am, and that would be more convenient. So uh, who wants to start with introductions? Let's Alphabet start. Alphabet order doesn't work, you're all A's, so. <laughs> okay, let's start with, with, from me. Uh, hello, everybody. I am uh, Alexander. Uh, I am a, a founder of a company which, named, which is named Victoria Metrics. Uh, have everybody heard about this company before? <laughs> okay. Uh, probably you heard about Prometheus uh, monitoring system. And Victoria Metrics is like Prometheus, but uh, better. <laughs> and it is also open source. And next one. Best one. Hello, everyone. My name is Andre. I work at Plant, and we are developing open source software and help other companies to deploy, prepare, and monitor their applications. We have various open source products, and we communicating with the community quite a lot, and with the different communities, and that's it. Hey, I'm Aneshka, and I'm here uh, as a representative of two different communities. Uh, first is Chesco Digital, uh, which is like only Czech-based uh, community focused on digital technologies and helping uh, NGOs with using digital technologies to its full potential. Uh, and the second one uh, is PyLadies, uh, which is a worldwide community uh, focusing on bringing more ladies to open source and to Python language. Uh, and I'm a member of a local chapter here in Brno. Um, with that, I think we can move on uh, to more specific topics because uh, the topic of community is very large, but I think we want to focus on a particular time set, which is uh, the last two years where quite large changes have occurred to the whole world, and they, we were win interested how much did they affect the communities. Um, so I think we, I wonder if each of you could look back into what changed two or three years ago and what's how the community looks now, both in terms of uh, success or failures or any kind of changes in how you approach them, the ways of work, uh, remote is a huge thing. How did that affect your particular communities? Um, I understand if you don't have a great look back into this, so it's totally fine to say, I'm not sure, I don't know, it's okay. There's not, no pressure. Uh, who wants to go first? Let's start for me again. Uh, Andre <laughs> will be next anyway. Okay. <laughs> uh, as for Victoria Metrics, uh, we see a huge uh, increase uh, in the number of people of our community uh, during the last two years. Uh, this is because uh, Victoria Metrics is a quite uh, young company. Uh, it is four years. It has been uh, founded four years ago, and uh, we are still uh, at startup mode. And uh, uh, our community and our user base uh, grows. Uh, uh, multiple times per year, and uh, during the last year, I believe that our community has grown uh, almost probably 10 times, <laughs> and uh, this is great, uh, and we see that uh, uh, the coronavirus uh, crisis, uh, which uh, held during the last two years, uh, increased uh, the uh, user's uh, involvement in our project, and uh, I believe uh, not on our project, but uh, in uh, all uh, open source projects, uh, because people uh, 
have more time uh, working from home and more time for exploring uh, different uh, available projects in open source and uh, have more time to spend uh, uh, the uh, time on, on these projects. And uh, that's great. Um, let's, uh, Andre, would you like to go next or we can add, ask yeah. some more questions? Come yes, on. sure. Uh, I can say from perspective of land because I'm working just half in half a year in this company but I was working with other open source software previously and we were developing some services which is uh, consuming these projects and I can say that yeah I see that uh, there is more and more people getting involved in this open source projects and I like this because it makes new communities and um, makes people uh, happy communicating with each other and this is a really beautiful thing and I like, I think in the future most of the projects will turn to be open sourced and all of them will have the uh, community because it's different business model but it's more likely, I would say, people like that and people like open source more than proprietary software and it makes some sense. Go or we can pass to Agnieszka and do another circle. How okay, so I have, I have experienced actually both sides of this coin. I mean, uh, with Cisco Digital, uh, the COVID was kind of a boost for the community because uh, at the first, at the time of the first lockdown, uh, the community was approximately half a year old. It would be really young, and at the time we had like thousand members of the community and over the first month of the first lockdown it doubled its size to 2000 and a year later in February 2021 it was 4000 people so it was really huge growth for us and uh, Chesco Digital was from the beginning meant as uh, uh, an online community so uh, we're basically living on Slack uh, so by COVID we were affected only in a positive way uh, not only with the growth, but also with the with the activities in the community. Because uh, Chesco Digital uh, is a community of expert volunteers, uh, and when they saw the crisis coming, uh, there was kind of immediate uh, immediate response for that, and people uh, came with a lot of ideas uh, supporting the urgent needs uh, in in uh, Czechia at the time. So, for example, uh, the, the COVID portal, which most of you maybe know as, as the one source of truth for COVID information, it was uh, originally built uh, with Chesco Digital and Naked together. So, uh, these kind of projects, uh, and it was really great to saw uh, all the people uh, come in and really wanted to help. Uh, of course, it has its downside. I mean, when the restrictions lifted, summer is coming and so uh, we saw the decrease in activity and then in, in in the spring of 2021 again the people came because there was another lockdown so it was kind of like suicide uh, but overall for Chesco Digital COVID years were years of growth uh, it's kind of different story for Pi Ladies in Brno because uh, uh, we didn't know before COVID actually uh, how important it's for us to be together face to face, on site, to meet other people. Because uh, uh, the main purpose of Pi Ladies is to create a secure, safe space for ladies who want to become involved in IT. Uh, and it's really, really hard to build this online. We tried. We tried with the first lockdown, we really tried to switch uh, our courses and our workshops online, but it didn't work. It was just, we, we weren't able to replicate the same safe space, the same environment to uh, build the relationships in the community so well as it is when we meet on site. So during COVID, uh, and it's specific for pilates in Brno, I can't speak of uh, another chapter in Czech Republic, but in Brno, we suspended most of our activities. And now uh, we believe the future is bright. Uh, we're restarting, uh, we're playing a lot of activities for summer and also for autumn. Stop by on our booth, I can tell you more. But over the two years of COVID, it was really, really painful for Paradise Brno. 
I keep hearing the recurring theme that the community is growing when the lockdown start, but the question is, um, what I would like to know is, do you foresee retaining those numbers? As in, the lockdowns, most of them are lifted in most countries. Won't just people go back to walking in the woods and having fun with their kids and so on? Do they stay in the community? How do you help them to stay and keep on working on the fun thing they did during lockdowns? Um, Andre now goes first because now it's his turn. Okay, I think it is really important to show the people that they work, if they're making some contributions, uh, to show that it is really important. And it's really important to show them, to, m to give them feeling that they're working on something big uh, that you can, you know, it's always cool when you can say, hey, my code is working somewhere in Google or somewhere on Facebook. Yeah, just if it's changing few few lines of code, it it's like make makes me happy, and I think it is important to give people the same feeling. Who wants to go next? Oh. Uh, I think that uh, of course uh, when the uh, lockdown is finished, then people tend to uh, do uh, other activities than uh, contributing to open source or involving in open source. But uh, we. Uh, can help people uh, remain uh, uh, in the community of open source projects uh, uh, by uh, uh, encouraging them and uh, by uh, uh, encouraging them not not only to contribute the code but uh, the uh, most important part of uh, or every open source project is documentation and uh, the documentation. Uh, it's easier to uh, contribute and uh, to improve uh, compared to code, and uh, uh, this means that wider uh, uh, audience of co our community can help us, and uh, we should encourage them, and we actually encourage them to uh, send our pull requests, uh, which fix uh, just uh, typos in our uh, documentation or improve our documentations uh, in a few words or a few sentences. And this is a great. Uh, I think this is a great uh, way to uh, encourage community and to grow it. And uh, another important part is uh, uh, Slack chats uh, or Telegram chats, uh, uh, where uh, the most active com community members uh, can take uh, active part, and they like that. Uh, and we should uh, help. Uh, uh, answer the, the questions uh, in these uh, chats and uh, should encourage to uh, ask the questions the, if, even if these questions uh, feel not uh, so professional. It's okay. Well, for us, it's a bit different. Uh, I mean, uh, both of you guys, uh, your communities are tied to like specific open source product. Uh, with Chesco Digital, it's different. I mean, we are built over uh, the open source principles, uh, but we don't have one specific tool or one specific product we are tied to. Uh, but uh, I, agree, I agree with Andre uh, with um, the importance of like this sense of belonging to work on something which is important, something which can help or so. Um, we experienced actually the, the similar boost we experienced with uh, the COVID we experienced now uh, with the situation in Ukraine. Because, uh, uh, again, it was built on the immediate res response to some crisis, and the community came together and started working on helping projects. And, uh, I mean, this is a really important thing, this sense of belonging, the, the urge to help. Uh, it's really common for the open source communities. Um, while we're talking about the successes over the last couple of years, we also must also mention the shortcomings of what happened uh, could have been done better, or more importantly, even the threats which are critical for the communities to not not to, to be entirely destroyed, because it's a very easy thing to destroy a community. So um, you're all coming from all different backgrounds, so I would like to share what are the threats you're seeing in uh, in how your community functions or even just sustains itself. Um, I think, yeah. 
Yeah. Uh, our project. It works. Okay. Uh, uh, our project uh, contains uh, consists of two parts. One uh, is open source, which is named Open Core, which contains uh, the most features of the project, uh, Victory Metrics, and also we have. Uh, Enterprise version of Victoria Metrics, uh, and uh, these features uh, are available only for people who uh, pay us uh, uh, money for contracts. And uh, I see that the main uh, threat for projects like ours, uh, which is named Open Core, uh, is that uh, open source community uh, usually want uh, enterprise features uh, to be pushed uh, to be backported to open source version and. Uh, uh, they always uh, push us. Uh, they say, "Why you put this to enterprise version? Put this uh, to open source version?" And this uh, the most challenging part of uh, such project is uh, ours to uh, to explain uh, as a community why we did this and uh, in the way so people uh, don't angry uh, on uh, us <laughs> and continue uh, being. Uh, our uh, funds. I don't know. Maybe I didn't get the question. Uh, the, what's the problems actually with developing open yes, source software? Yes, the, the the threats and problems mm -hmm. and shortcomings of what you did last for last two years. What is the most threatening thing? Is probably the most interesting question. Where do you see the threat coming to your community? I can say much because, again, I work in just half a year developing open source software. But uh, yeah, that's, I agree with Alexei, <laughs> Alexander, sorry. Uh, yeah, <laughs> that's it's always problem to uh, understand how to split your software, how to sell it, actually. But there is some options how you can do that, and, and that's interesting. Like uh, you can develop your open source software, and you can try to sell it. And we that we do that the different way. We actually we prepare the tool which is solving our problems and solving our cases, and we just put it into the open source. So the main um, principle how we get the money it's it's still our clients, but we developing our tool which can be used by anyone else. And I think this is win-win. So when it comes to differences between open core and the full support module, we have two different opinions, as in you're assuming that the problems you're hitting would be the problems of your customers as well, meaning if you put this open source, you can support them better. This is pr pretty much similar to Red Hat's model, right, if I understood this correctly, while Alexander's model is more classical open core where you have to find a very careful balance between paid customers and community. Okay, but that makes perfect sense. Um, Anishka, of course, any? Yeah, I mean, for us it's, again, a bit different, uh, but I think uh, we have some similarity to what uh, Alexander says, uh, which is a motivation, motivation of the community, which is, also, uh, of course, a bit different than when you're working on some big project, but to keep the keep the volunteers motivated it's the same for all the communities and you can uh, find the the similarities all over uh, for us uh, we have uh, in Chesco Digital uh, we have a small uh, core team which actually its function is to keep the community happy uh, to provide uh, all the tools needed uh, to provide support uh, to step in uh, if there is a need uh, or so uh, and uh, to nurture the community uh, which is which can be applied to all open source communities I believe to all communities actually to have those uh, who feel the responsibility of keeping the community alive okay uh, I think that uh, the most important uh, thing which uh, we can do to in order to uh, increase our community and uh, make our community happy uh, is to uh, follow uh, their suggestions uh, on uh, how the, our product should evolve. And uh, this is great. Uh, and <laughs> as for Victoria Metrics, uh, we always uh, try to follow, uh, to listen to our community and uh, to implement features which uh, they mostly 
want, and we see uh, that uh, this uh, much better than uh, somebody, uh, than wa one uh, person, for instance, me, uh, can decide which uh, features should be implemented and, and uh, don't listen for community. And uh, so we uh, follow the path by listening to the community and implementing features uh, which the community demand, uh, not uh, the features which uh, somebody wa uh, like me <laughs> want to implement because I like it. And uh, this, <laughs> uh, this works well because uh, uh, people like when uh, their feature requests uh, are implemented and uh, if uh, these features uh, are needed by a big uh, number of people, wider audience, uh, then uh, this audience uh, become uh, more uh, uh, supportive for, for your project and uh, uh, become uh, evangelists of the project, and this is great. I would also append that it is important to be uh, polite with uh, your community, and it's always cool when you're making some bug reports to get fast reply on that, and that's the thing the people um, what expecting from you. And if you see and if you're communicating with the community very well, they will like you even more. Um. I think we have three minutes left, so let's do one last question, and then we probably could have the audience ask you a few things. So we have a half an hour break after our uh, yeah, session, so, so we, we can, can continue. A, we can always m slowly move to the hallway track. It's, it's, that's the benefit of the, of the DEF CON, of course. Um, let's, let's make it short. Uh, I want you to name one thing you are very, very proud of, which is related to community for the last two years. What's the biggest thing which immediately comes into your mind when we mention success in the community or something like that? I have a short one, that we survived and, and we're going <laughs> on. <laughs> I know that feeling. <laughs> uh, any other survivors? <laughs> I don't know, I just want to say that I like how uh, Google can uh, organize the community. They know how to do, they actually, with the organization terms, uh, all these special interest groups, working groups, and I like the organization. I think that organization is important thing to have in communities. I have no input. <laughs> <laughs> we will count you as a survivor then, good. Um, anybody from the audience wants to give a one, couple of questions so we just slowly move to the sh hallway track? I, I see that, yeah. Okay. yeah. Yes. Uh, no. <laughs> uh, hello everyone, so thank you for great discussion. Uh, like, you probably using, at least for Alexander, you're using GitHub to get an input, what is needed. But if we're talking about communities, we have different channels like Slack, forums, whatever. How you can measure the engagement and how can you actually understand that your community is growing, community is dying, or it's like a stagnation? Yeah. Thanks for the question. Uh, very interesting question. And um, there are many metrics uh, which we can use to measure the, uh, our community. Uh, for instance, uh, the number of issues uh, per gi the given period of time, and if we see that uh, the number of issues uh, created and uh, feature requests which our users create uh, during some period of time, during the months, increases, then this means that uh, our community grows. Uh, also, uh, we have metrics such as uh, the number of downloads of our uh, binaries uh, and uh, our, uh, the number of visits to our uh, GitHub, uh, to our website, uh, to our documentation. And uh, we can also measure uh, the growth of the community by these numbers. And, uh, this, uh, and also, uh, the number of people in our Slack chats and uh, Telegram chats also uh, shows uh, whether the community grows over the time. Uh, and uh, the one thing, we see uh, the big increase in the number of uh, pull requests from uh, community members uh, for our projects. 
uh, during the last two years, especially because uh, if we uh, will see at our project uh, two years ago, uh, then uh, the majority of uh, commits uh, and pull requests were from uh, the members of uh, Victorometrics team, especially from me. <laughs> and uh, if we uh, look at uh, the, these commits uh, for the last month, for instance, uh, then uh, we can see that uh, almost half of uh, these commits go from community members, not from uh, Victorometrics team. And this is great, this shows that the community grows. Totally I agree with everything <laughs> said before. Uh, I can also append that this is uh, might be really cool <coughs> when not only you talking about your product, but when people starting talking about that, having discu discu discussions and you can find the discussions in some different places, in some unrelated forums and sites li like that. We, we need to wrap it up. <laughs> but no, it's okay. I mean, it's uh, we have the same metrics as Alexander said. Oh so. Yeah. so basically the externals and the, the progress of how many external people are communicating. Yeah, that makes sense. Um, okay, I think that's all the time we have left, even more so. Um, Feel free to ask additional questions to the people in the hallway track. That's why we have it. And thank you very much for all of your attention. And then the round of applause for our perfect panelists, please. <laughs>